Praise God. It's a wonderful thing for us to gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a great God we serve. What a privilege it is for us to be born again, saved. And uh, that's what God wants us to really let the world know. Something that's different in us. In fact, in the, in fact, it's God's desire that people in the world should envy us and say, my, this guy is always blessed. He always has a smile. He always is rejoicing. He's so different. I just can't understand. I get so mad because he wants to make people jealous around you. Right? Because he wants people to see the goodness in your life and, and turn their lives over to the Lord. And uh, I think every, every one of us, we, we, we face situations in our life because some of them, demons, they are, they are really mad because we are saved. I mean, they don't want us to be around somebody who is not saved because the only thing that comes out of us is Jesus and how great our God is. So he makes things like to uh, agitate us, to make us feel weary as if we are we made a big blunder in life and cause all that, all that blame on our lives because we've accepted Jesus, Lord of our life. But let me take you to a scripture from the book of Jeremiah. It just came to me while I was seated here right now. I'm just, I just came to the pulpit. It says in Jeremiah chapter 30, and, uh, and verse number 9 onwards, but they shall serve the Lord, their God, and David, their king, whom they, whom I will raise, whom I will raise up unto them. And that's talking to Israel, but then we, we understand it in the right perspective. We take it how we worship the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, fear not thou, O oh, my servant Jacob, the word Jacob, it's actually uh, the word deceiver, that's what it means. See, we were deceivers, we were, we were liars, we were cheaters, we were not the kind of people, but then God changed Jacob into Israel, or made him a, the name called Prince. Fear thou not, my servant Jacob, said the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. So when you, you see the word Israel, you can uh, translate it by saying, you are the spiritual Israel. You are the true Jew. You are the true circumcision. Not made out of hand, but you are the real Israel. Because you are spiritually born into the kingdom of God. Lo, I will save them, save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. He's talking about you. You shall be in rest and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. That's one scripture. And also I want to read another scripture. In uh, Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. It's all talking about us. See, whenever you see the word Israel, that does not mean he's talking just to the nation of Israel. He's talking to the spiritual uh, believers. In Jeremiah 33 and verse number 9, Jeremiah 33 and verse number 9, and it shall be to me a name. It's talking about you. It's talking about you. You shall be a name Unto me a name of joy, which means you're going to be so joyful, your name will be called joy. Praise, a praise, you're a praising people. You just love praising the Lord, right? You know, somebody, uh, he really thought that he can just offend me. He said, you're the happy, clappy, hallelujah people. I said, yes, I am one. I'm guilty of it. I am a happy, clappy, and I am somebody who always rejoices. There's a joy, there's a song in my heart. 
It may offend you, but that's not going to stop me from praising the Lord. That's not going to stop me from enjoying the goodness of God. I'm going to be a praiser. And it shall be a name of joy and praise and honor before the nations. You're going to be an honorable man before the nations of the earth. A dignified person you are. Not because you don't do the things that they do or you don't, you have that snobbishness in you. You are truly an honor to God and he would also make you an honor amongst people. Some of them may not recognize you now, but they would realize later and recognize you. I wish. That's going to be in their tongue sometimes. Sometime later. Because when they see that you really meant business with God, it was not just a kind of a religious uh, ritual that you got into or something. You're a new person. You're truly a new person. You're truly a treasure of God. Bible talks about he has, he has made our, he has put a treasure within our earthen vessels. He has put a, he has put the power of God and he says, that's a treasure that I have put in an earthen vessel. And your earthen vessel is called the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is called the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it shall be a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They are going to hear of all the good, of all the peaceful things that they have seen in your life, they're going to envy. They're going to be so mad with you because you're so blessed. You're so blessed. Just rejoice in the Lord because demons are, are aroused because the more and more you are blessed and you're walking in the authority and the power that Christ has vested in you, you are going to be a different person. You're definitely not going to be like somebody whom they want you to be. The people want to get, in, get you into their mold. Just be like me. But if you don't want to be like me, at least be a little less than me at least. So that I can do my wish over your life. You're going to be an honor before all the nations of the earth which shall hear of all the good that I do. They're going to hear of all the good that, they are, that you have been blessed with. See, God wants, to, God wants to bring people out of their bondages by doing something good in your life. God is a real show off. I mean, he truly can be. He is, he is looking at the galaxies and the beauties of the earth. You could say, my, he can really show himself. I like that. My God is a big God. He's a big show off. Yeah, he is. And all his show is for you, for his children. Everything that he created, he created for you and for me, every one of us. And the people around them, and especially they're in, they're in the flesh and blood and, and, and also influenced by demons sometimes, some of them, and most of them are really. So what happens is they get so upset about it. Because God is doing good in your life. You're getting prosperous. You're walking in health. You're less dependent on them. At one time you were so all the time, you know, they like to see you weary and worn out and give up on life. And they, they could really accuse you or they could just try to do things against you and make you feel condemned. For all the good that he does. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Right? I read the scripture and I keep laughing. I said, Lord, you really want to bless your people so much so that you really want to make the world so envious against us. I laugh when I read this. I said, Lord, you have some humor here. God says, I have, 
And they shall fear and tremble. You know, people who fear, they, are, they try to cover themselves and, and they try to guard themselves because they are in fear. They are afraid. Because the greater one dwells in you now than he that is in the world. And he's, God says, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, all the good that you're getting. Not because you're, you're mad with them or you're, you're impatient with them. It's only because you're, you become so good. They shall fear. And because of their fear, they want to be mean to you. So don't get upset with them. They want, to, they want to be mean to you because of God's goodness which is upon their life. And the goodness and for all the prosperity. God gives you prosperity so that he can let the world fear and tremble. And they try to do everything that they could. They try to curse you. They try to but it's just like putting water on a duck's back. When they curse you, you bless them. When they despitefully use you, pray for them. They get so mad about that too. Demons scream, don't pray for me, don't pray for me, don't pray. We're not praying for demons, we're praying for the person. We want to get that devil out of the person. We don't want the demons at all into the kingdom of God. And God can never save them. <laughs> he's not a repentant demon. He's a demon. He's going to, his rightful place is a lake of fire. His rightful place is a lake of fire. And Jesus didn't die for demons. He died for you and for me, for the human beings. He died for the creation of God, the, the beauty of God. So, for all the goodness and the prosperity that he creates in us, they fear and tremble. You know, people who are fearful and people who tremble, they want to, they really want to guard themselves and they really want to trouble others because of their fear. But you keep rejoicing. You keep praising the Lord and never stop praising the Lord because praises are very important because the Bible says the God dwells in the midst of the people who praise him. God dwells in the midst of the people who praise him. Be joyful. Be a person of, who will be willing to always praise the Lord and know that you're an honorable person. God loves you so much so that he made you a very honorable man and a woman that you would love him and serve him and you would envy the world and, the envy, and that envy would turn around and say, I want to know the God that you're serving. There are many people who have come to Christ just, just like that. I'm so mad with you. I hate you. I do. But I, one thing that I want to know is who is blessing you so much? I want to know that God. And that's how they can turn around. That's how they can turn around. When God gives protections to, he, to it, when God brings joy and happiness to the people of God, there are people who are going to get converted and changed. Their hearts are going to change. Let me take you to a book uh, called Esther. And I'm thinking of this scripture that is coming to me of how the Jews were threatened. I believe it's in uh, chapter 8. And how the Jews are threatened after the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and there was a false allegation that was made against the Jews and the, all the Jews were supposed to be killed. And the king had already commanded and given command that all the Jews must be killed. But prayer and intercession went through and we found that the king's wife was a Jew and she was able to intercede and she mediate, she became the mediator and she told the king all the lies that had been planned. Even to kill the king was a plan of the enemy, not only the Jews, but to kill the king and, and this person had an idea of becoming the king himself and all these things. But when everything happened, when, 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 when when the king changed his command, this is how it happened. 
verse number 13 onwards, the copy of the writing for the commandment to be given to every province and published unto all people. And the Jews should be ready against the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon the mules and the camels went out being hastened and pressed on by the king's command and the decree that was given at Shushan the palace. Mordecai went out from the presence of the king. When all this happened, when the favor of God came upon Mordecai, Mordecai was the one who was interceding and he was, Mordecai was the uncle of the, 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 the queen. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel, blue and white, and with the great crown of gold, when the decree was changed that the Jews are not supposed to be slain, but the one who planned all this, he was hung. He was hung. He and his family, entire family was hung because his plan was to take over the kingdom by killing the Jews. And he went out. Uh, it's good for you to read the whole book of Esther. You would understand a lot of things. Blue and white and with great, and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Sushan rejoiced and was glad because they were saved. They were supposed to be slain. All of them were supposed to be slain, but the king saved them. He changed his decree. And then verse 16 says, the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. Once again, we see this is the same thing we see, God wants to honor us. He wants us to have joy and gladness. Not sadness, it's gladness, okay? And in every province, in every city, whithersoever the king's command and his decree came, he reversed the order. And the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and, and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell on them. There will come a time that people are going to come around and say, please tell us about your God. We fear the awesome judgment that's about to come upon the earth. They're going to come running. So be ready. You're, going to, you're the lighthouse of God. They're going to come to your light. See another scripture from the book of uh, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 60, that's a beautiful scripture. Isaiah 60, it's talking to the church, it's talking to you and to me. Because God is working. Never forget that God is always a working God. He's moving, he's, he, he's a God of patience, his will is that not any man should perish. That's the worst thing that you should ever say to a person, go to hell. Uh, we used that when we were to hell with you. And you know, I was a person, that was my, those are my last words when I heard about Jesus. I said, to hell with you and your Jesus, I'll go and catch another fish. That's what I told my wife, who's my wife now. I didn't care at all, but then when Jesus appeared to me and he saved my life, it all became a different thing. Never ever even plan of any one of you ever, even in your wildest dream, you should never say that somebody should go to hell. That's not the heart of a child of God. Hell and Hades were never made for man. It's man who chooses to go to hell. God never made hell for man. It's man who chooses to go follow the devil. And if you follow the devil, you're going to definitely go to where he is. That's all he has. That's all he can take you to. He was kicked out of heaven because he disobeyed and he rebelled against the king. God himself, he rebelled against God and he was kicked out of heaven. And he has come down to earth. Now he's deceiving people and he's taking them 
to hell. While the good news says you don't have to go to hell, you don't have to perish, it's not God's will that you should perish. But all should come to repentance. Isaiah 60 and verse number one says, Arise. That word arise also means be strengthened. Arise and shine. Like you're a person who is set on fire. Arise means be strengthened. That word shine also means, I mean, be on fire. You're, you're on fire. Arise, shine, strong. Uh, strong as you are, I mean, set yourself forth to the position where you would uh, be, you would be on fire all the time. There was a preacher long years back and, and people used to call him the fiery preacher. And people used to say, we want to see the fire that is in you. There's so much of fire in him. There's so much of life and joy and light that was in him and, and the love that was oozing in winning people to Christ. So be in a position where you will be set on fire for your light, the brightness of your shining or your light has come or it has it started to appear. Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The presence of the Lord is risen upon you. You're the healing hand of Jesus. You're the extended arm of Almighty God. He wants you to be so full of fire and so full of joy. He wants his people he, he's exhibiting himself through you. He wants to exhibit himself. He wants to show himself strong. Just like the Bible says in First, Corin First Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 16, I believe. Where it says, or 16 and verse 9, it says God. First Chronicles 16 and verse 9. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Second Chronicles, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. God wants to show himself strong. So his eyes are running here and there all over. Let me find somebody I can just show myself strong. Right? In the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. Let me tell you one thing, you have the perfect heart. You are the perfect candidate. Everyone who is in Christ Jesus is a perfect candidate. That's the reason you're, you got to. You got to call this body of yours a temple of the Holy Spirit and you got to know that you're, you're a vessel of honor, not of dishonor. You're a vessel of honor, not dishonor. So the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro. He's looking for people who are willing that he can show himself strong on behalf of those hearts are perfect. And every child of God's heart is perfect. Only thing is you've got to be willing. It's not playing around. It's meaning business with God. I'm in business with God. I'm not just saved just for the sake of, by the skin of my teeth, I'm saved. Thank God. I got my citizenship in heaven. Oh my God, that's great. But what now? Wouldn't you love to be a person who would be a blessing to others also who, whom you would like to draw, draw them? You know, God not only made you a citizen of heaven, but he also made you an ambassador. And the work of the ambassador is to talk high about his kingdom, about his ruling country. Ambassadors don't talk about the, about the present happening of this country. They talk big about our country. You know our country, we have this, that, and the other. You take the ambassadors, I mean, they, you don't have the pictures of Sri Lankan pictures. I mean, I've, I've been to embassies and they always have their beautiful pictures of their country. And how great they are and how wonderful. I mean, you got to come over and see what we have there. And you are called an ambassador for Christ. 
you are called an ambassador for Christ. It's in the book of Second uh, Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse number 17 onwards. In 17 it says, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, a species that never existed before. You are a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new in you. All. Some people, for the sake, you know, they just, they just, for the sake of, you know, kind of their own loose living, they kind of think, okay, my spirit is saved, so I can live any old way I want to. After all, my spirit is saved. Well, God saved you, body, soul, and spirit. And that's the reason he calls your body the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever say, I can do what I want to. No, you don't have to. You can do what you want to, but you don't have to. In 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, it says, Know ye not what? I mean, he said, what? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? You see the word ghost there, you, don't, you think of some ghosts in the night. No, it's talking about the Spirit, actually, Holy Spirit, okay? Holy Spirit, who is in you? Whenever they see the witch, the word witch means not talking about a thing, it's talking about him. So what? Don't you know that your body is the, holy, the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Who you have... Of God. God has given you the Holy Spirit. And you are not your own. That's the reason every decision you make, you've got to make sure. Lord, is it your will? Is it your will that I should do this? And you should let your conscience answer you. Not the conscience, not the fallen conscience of the world. Oh, it's all right. You can just, I mean, after all, everybody's okay. You've got to hear what the Spirit says. Because you don't belong to yourself. You don't, not your own. And the next verse says, you are bought with a price. You're a purchased property. The blood of Jesus was the highest price that was paid to make you the person that you are today and make you the person not only who you are today, it's the heart and the will of God. For you are a purchased property. Therefore, glorify God. Bring honor to Him. Not to your flesh. Not how everybody compliments you and make you feel good about and Go with the band wing. That's not it. He wants you to understand that you're, you're here to please him, not to please people. In your spirit, in your body, and your spirit. Didn't say only spirit. Oh yeah, just go and tell body, I got a, I got a, I really got a, I got my citizenship in heaven. I'm born again. And I got a ticket to heaven. The day I die, I go to heaven. No, you're supposed to be living the heavenly life here on earth and represent Christ here on earth because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, First Peter chapter 1 and verse, we'll read, we'll read from verse 15. Maybe, yeah, 19 is the right word, but then let's go further. We go behind. Take three, uh, third, let's go to 13. Wherefore, gird up your loin, the loins of your mind. I mean, put things in order in your mind. Be sober. Be sober. Don't be like a drunk staggering around. Be sober. And the hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you 
unto the revelation of Jesus Christ or the revealing of Jesus Christ. And the next verse, as obedient children, that's important. As obedient children, it's praiseworthy when you find a child who is obedient, not a rebellious child. As obedient children, look at obedient child, you could praise the family and say, mother, you really brought this child up. This child is an obedient child. It brings honor to the parents. It brings honor to the parents. So does God get honor when you walk in obedience. As obedient parents, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Not fashioning yourself according to the former lust, the strong desires that we had in the past. In our ignorance, we were craving for things that were worthless. Well, I understand. If you start seeking first the kingdom of God, some of the little desires that you had that were not sinful, God will bring to pass in your life. But seek first the kingdom of God and his right standing that you have or the righteous principles and all these things shall be added. Don't run after the things but run after God and those things are going to be added into your life. That's in Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness or his principles. And all these things. Didn't you say they'll be subtracted from you? They'll be added into your life. You might say, I have certain strong desires in me and I want to fulfill them. No. No. First things first. Seek first the things of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, the principles of God's way of doing things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right standing that you have, that you, you know if you seek his righteousness, you're going to be a holy character. The word holy is a dirty word to the world but not to the children of God. You talk about holiness, it's a dirty word. But the, but the fruit of righteousness is holiness. It's somebody's life who has been set apart, who is willing to serve his master. You love God so much so that you want to serve him, love him. He comes, he comes first in your life. He's number one in your life. But some of us, we have some other things in the list on number one. It doesn't bring any satisfaction. It only brings frustration. We make everything else. So living a holy life is like a curse word to the world, but it's godliness. It's true godliness because godliness is profitable unto all things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So don't try to seek after the things. Don't put the cart before the horse. Right? You put the cart before the horse, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to stay where you are. Or the cart is going to, or the horse is going to take you the other way. First things first. Right? So going back to the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, and verse 14, where it says, as obedient children, we are children of God. It's good. We have an obedient spirit. The Holy Spirit, he speaks to us. We say, yes, sir, we obey you. Yes, Lord, I will obey you. As obedient children. Obedient children are always praiseworthy. God gets the glory in your obedience. Not fashioning yourself according to the former lust. Formerly, I mean, some people, I mean, they're walking the Christian life, but they still think, oh, I desire those things. I'm craving after those, the former lusts. That was all in our ignorance we were seeking after. But now we are here. 
We have before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Creator of the universe. Now He has become my Father. I am so excited with this life. If Christianity is no excitement to you, I think there is something wrong somewhere. Either we are not born again, or we are not changing our way of thinking. Every time we come to church, every time we read the Bible, every time we make declarations, you are only changing your way of thinking. You're changing your way of thinking. That's the reason you've got to keep attending to where, wherever, wherever you find that can change my way of thinking. And the next verse, but as he which has called you is holy, but as he who has called you is holy, God is not an unclean God. It's a holy God. And the word, and, and, and holiness is not a curse word or it's not a name to be detested. It's clean living, very simple. It is to live a life of freedom. It's a devil who is unclean and he makes people unclean. That's why the Bible very clearly states here, the one who has called you is holy. Now look at all what we see in the media, it's unclean. All the muck and the rubbish is coming out from hell. And people kind of think they praise and the famous characters, they're always praised. And that's how the devil wants to, to run the show. To keep the minds of the people so confused, so destroyed, they just can't choose. They want to live a clean life, but then what they have seen is making them live an unclean life. There is no commitment of living. No wonder we have problems in marriages today. Because they, 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 they make a marriage covenant, I will, I will not depart from with you, I'll just stay with you as long as I live. Make all the covenants, all the promises that you want, and all of a sudden, why do we see these things? Because they are listening to garbage. The devil is feeding the minds of the people. I mean, he has to get demon-possessed people to come on media to the extent where people can be so demonized. And you would think these are inhuman acts. Nobody would want to even dream of doing these things. But God says, I, I who called you, I am holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation and conduct. That's what it also means there. Conversation and conduct. So if your conversation is right, your conduct is going to follow. Your conversation, your conversation is right, you're, you're going to do the things rightly. People have foul mouths today. We always say, this guy has a dirty mouth. We say that easily because, I mean, they can't speak anything good until they start cursing somebody or blaming something or something that they got to say. But you got to change your conversation. You must change your conversation if you really want to see a change of conduct in your life. Be holy. You know, that's, that's a curse word for them, holy. My, what are you talking about holiness? Today, things are so free. We can do what we want to. I mean, just be a free person. Yeah, you want to be a free person? Be holy and see how free you are. Be free from sickness and disease and demon oppressions. That's called real freedom. That's called real freedom. I used to remember, I mean, I came out of this junk and the mess that I was involved with. I started hearing messages on holiness and started listening to praise and worship and they, they just took off all that confusion and had these headaches coming into me all the time. And listening to praise and worship and reading the Bible and, and singing songs and worshiping, oh, it made me a free man. Who wants to go back to that junk? I mean, you come out of the junkyard, I mean, just like you come out of the pig pen and you want to go back? So you and I, we were pigs and dogs. 
And now we're made sheep, and sheep are very clean animals. Sheep are very clean. Thank God. That's what he made. That's why he said, I'm your shepherd and you're my sheep. They're very innocent. Sheep have become so full of wisdom. And he already made you a sheep. And he also says, he says, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. I send you forth. I mean, we go to the world clean as we are. We come out. And then we go among wolves. And all of a sudden, we begin to realize, and God says, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. That's what the Lord said. I send you forth as sheep among wolves. Be wise as a serpent. See, a clean person walks in wisdom and harmony and patience, so full of joy, Carefree, no sorrow, free from all that anxiety and why? Because your conversation is right. So be holy in all manner of conversation so that your conduct will come in line with your conversation. And the next verse, I like to do a verse by verse study. I know we don't have time, but I just love it because sometimes we have to take scriptures out of you know, we don't take out of context, but we put them in context. We take it out, out of context from one scripture and take it into another scripture and put it in context. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. The reason we live holy, because we serve a holy God. We, we, we were slaves to the unholy devil, and we were unholy as the devil is. But when he saved us, he says, I called you, the one, I, the one who has called you is holy, so be holy even as I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. That's very simple. It's no struggle when you have the new nature in you. When you, be, when you learn about the new nature that you are, holiness is not a struggle. Living godly is not a struggle. It's the people who think that they are born again. I think I'm born again. I think I'm a Christian because I go to church. And, uh, and they have a struggle. Oh, I love to do this, but I can't. I love to. Well, if you can't, which means you, don't, you are not born again. If you're born again, you will. I'm not saying every now and then you may have, you may slip around, but still for all, you're still going to wake up to the fact that you're, your, the, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're born again. You're born again. You're a child of the Most High God. See, once you're a holy child of God, you want to live clean. You want to live holy. You want to please your master. You love him so much so. He becomes, he becomes our heavenly bridegroom. He's my heavenly bridegroom. I want, to, I want to serve him. I so love him. In fact, his love... That is, it's not we who loved him first. He loved us first, the Bible says. And through the love that he has loved us with, we love him back. And how, how do you say a man loves God? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will keep my word. The word of God with a priority in your life. The first and the foremost thing that you would think is, what does the word say? What does the word say? Be holy even as I'm holy. The next verse. And, uh, and, you are co- uh, and if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, every, according to every man's work, pass this time of your sojourning here in fear. We are pilgrims. We are sojourning here. It's a very short period compared to eternity. Eternity is there is life everlasting and you'll never see death in your life. There's no more funerals. No more deaths. You have eternal life in you. 
There is no spiritual burial for you. You were buried once. And your old nature died and you rose again. That's all. And you're very much alive in Christ Jesus. There is no more death in you. Well, the physical body, you just put these clothes off someday. But that's unimportant. But the most important thing is you've got eternal life in you. So pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Not that fear. I'm talking about reverence. Pass your time here, here on this earth in reverence to God. Lord, what would you do in a situation that I'm in right now? How would you answer? You know, when you have that godly fear in you, you're a different character. Godly fear. He's talking about that, that fear that is in you. It should be that godly fear that you would have high reverence to the word of God. High reverence to the word of God. Everything matters in my life. What did God say? Well, how does God? There are things that I wanted to do on my own and all of a sudden the Lord says, no, stop it. This is not the time that you should do it. I mean, they're not bad things. If that's not the time. He said, wait. So I said, okay, Lord, I wait. And I made the right decision. And it was a blessing to me. Every time I can make a decision, I, I know it turns out to be a blessing. Every, time, every act of obedience in your life is only for the purpose of bringing a blessing or a promotion or upgrading in your life. Every act of obedience is only for the promotion or to promote you to some, some extent, to lift you up, to take you to a higher level. I mean, the word obedience also is a curse word in the world, but we don't have to compare those words with the world, how the world recognizes them. They are obedient children. The next verse, verse 18, for as much as you were not redeemed with corruptible things, remember one thing, none of us are redeemed by corruptible things, as silver and gold, even Silver and gold are corruptible in the sight of God. We would say gold, silver, they're so valuable. God says, incomparable to the redemption that you have received. From your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, a lot of traditional things that have been handed down from one generation to another generation, those are traditional stuff that has come. We were not saved out of those traditional stuff. We were not saved of them. Not even as much as silver and gold is valuable concerning our salvation. There are good traditions, there are bad traditions. But God says it's not by the traditions of your fathers that you're saved. I've heard some good, thing, good things from our traditional teaching, but that's not, that have never brought salvation to it. They've given us some kind of a temporary solutions. But your eternal salvation or redemption was the next verse, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without spot, a lamb without blemish, and without spot. Your redemption is by the blood of Christ. The clean, holy, pure, heavenly blood. That's why Mary had to be clean, Mary had to be clean, a virgin, that she had to bring forth Christ Jesus into this world. That it was not the blood of Joseph whom she was spoused to or engaged to. That was not the blood of Joseph, it was the blood of God. Jesus was born of the blood of God. As a lamb without blemish, and when he hung on the cross, he died for us. His blood was so pure and clean. And the devil thought, I mean, he's as another person. I can just draw him to hell and keep him because he was a real problem for me for the last three and a half years. He has been destroying my kingdom. Wherever he went, he cast me out. He kicked me around. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. But I got him. I got him on the cross. 
but he didn't know that the blood of Jesus was poison to the devil. The blood of God was poison to the devil. That was too much. He never expected Jesus to rise again on the third day. He thought I would just, I got the one who was a real troublemaker to me. I made all the religions, I kept all those Pharisees, was, an, was one denomination, the Sadducees was another denomination, all the priests together they had, and they had so many religions put together, and he said, I have got all religion, I mean, all, I'm the leader of all religious people. But this man, he never submitted to me. He always kicked me around. When, when demon possessed people came close to Jesus, they said, oh, who are you? It's not our time. And, and many times they, they screamed and said, it's not your time to cast us out. They threatened Jesus. And they, and they also pleaded with Jesus, don't you send us. Don't you cast us. We are, we, are, we are in rest in the lives of people. Satan is finding a place of rest and the place of rest for a person is having unrest in the person's life. When Satan takes rest in your home, then you become so restless. You lost all your freedom when Satan comes and he comes and lives in you. So when Jesus walked into situations, the demons screamed. They even threatened Jesus. Firstly, they threatened him. And then they pleaded. Nothing worked. Jesus said, go. And they went. Oh, don't send us to hell. Just let us get into those swines there. And Jesus didn't send them to the swines. He just said, leave this man. Go. He, I mean, those demons left. Can you imagine a whole load of hogs? They went into I mean, those spirits that was controlling this one man who was naked all the time, living amongst the corpse, and you try to bind him with chains, he just breaks off those chains, and he was tormented day and night, and when Jesus spoke a word, those demons got into all those hogs, and they went down the precipice, but this man was free. This one man was free, and he sat at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus clothed him. And he said, please, let me come with you. I want to go with you. He said, no, go home and tell your people, your home folks, of what God has done in your life. And the people in this city, they didn't celebrate this demon-possessed man coming out. They said, Jesus, we want you to get out of this place. Go. We don't want you. They chased Jesus out. They said, you made a mess of our hogs. And you have released this man. That's what happens to people. People are so selfish. When you are released from a bondage, when you're living a, a shameful life all your life and you, you're the kind of person whom nobody wants to associate with and, and when you're released, they don't want anything to do with you now. They, they, they thought it better let that man live in the, uh, in the tombs, amongst the tombs, in the graveyards, amongst the graveyards. That's all right, he can just live there but leave us alone. It's basically talking about we want to be demon possessed ourselves. It doesn't matter. Through this one demon releasing this man, he is going to come and he's going to go around and talk about Jesus to other people. So he's a living testimony. We're going to tell everybody what Jesus has done. The people in, the, in, the, in that country, they said, Jesus, we don't want you. Please leave us. We love to be with these demons. We enjoy demons better than having Jesus in our hearts. They rejected Jesus. But this one man, nobody celebrated this man being released. They didn't celebrate. They didn't say, oh, Jesus. 
what a great miracle this man he was a terrible guy he comes from a good home i believe and look at the state of him when they saw him with his right mind i think we should put that scripture up i like that scripture one day i was reading that scripture and and and, and the lord just ministered to me see if you can find that scripture it's in luke or matthew oh uh, Mark 5, Mark 5, okay, is that Mark 5? Yeah, Mark 5, we'll read. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Mark 5. And also you find in Luke 8, I believe so, Luke 8, 26. Yeah, Luke 8, 26, I just like to read Luke 8, 26. Uh, verse 33. When the devils or demon spirits, then went the demon spirits out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep into the lake and were choked. See, that was a type and shadow of what Jesus was doing. When he came, not only released this man, he took control of the whole city. The demon that was controlling the city or this country. And then we find when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told the, told to the city and in the country. When they saw this happening, that this one man was released who had the power of a herd of swine, right? This kind of a strength that this one man had, the demons have possessed him with. And they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man, found the man. You would love to see a man and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus. Number one, when you're released from demon powers and you get saved, the first thing that you must think of is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Take time with Jesus. And he was clothed. He was given a garment of salvation. That was honor. Jesus took away his shame and gave him honor. And in his right mind, he had a renewed mind. Now he was not an ignorant person. He was. That's what needs to happen to every child of God. Number one, when things happen in your life, when you, have, when you come out of the kingdom of darkness, you've got to sit at the feet of Jesus. That is learning the word. First thing that you've got to say, I just love the word. I'm going to go to the word. I'm going to sit with him. And because God has honored me with a clothing of great honor, I'm not ashamed no more. Nobody will ever call me. Let them call what they want to, but I got the garment of salvation. I got a garment that has covered me. I'm a new person. And I'm in my right mind. And when something good has happened to them, the people in the city, they got afraid. They were never afraid when demons were possessed with this man, but now they got afraid. Right? That's why people get afraid of you when you come into your right mind and you're walking in dignity and when you're spending time with the Bible. I'm just talking to some people. You just need to change your way of thinking. If you, if you really are being delivered from demons, the first thing that you would do is you would have sit at the feet of Jesus knowing that you have been clothed. Your nakedness is removed. Your shame is removed and you have become a new creation in Christ Jesus and now you've got a right mind and people around you are going to be afraid of you. That's the scripture that I started with in Jeremiah. Right? God is going to prosper you. Now this man really got prosperous over, over just one sitting with Jesus. Demons were cast out and he, he fell 
at the feet of Jesus, he was worshiping Jesus and he was clothed and in his right mind and the people in the town and the city were afraid. People will get afraid of you when you're in your right mind. But they didn't mind you hanging around with demons and living shamelessly and being ashamed, doing all crazy things all right. But when you come to your right senses, when God does something nice in you, how come they start opposing you now? They never opposed you earlier. I'm talking with experience. 38 years ago when this happened to me, this is exactly my shame was taken away and I started reading the Bible and they said, this man has now stopped drinking or he's gone to drugs. He's very dangerous. They consulted the astrologers and they said, this man has become a more dangerous character now because he has, he's very quiet, you know, People who take drugs, they're very quiet. People who drink, they just make a mess of things and go to sleep. Now he's come to his right mind. That's what my, my, that's what my home folk did for me. And they were all after me, you are going to become a drug addict. You're a dangerous character. Persecution began. I came into my right senses and my right mind and persecution began. Demons are afraid of the good things that happen in you. When good things happen to you, demons get afraid. So rejoice. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. And the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them. All the people, they protested together. Jesus, please, go away. You've done a dangerous thing. You got this man delivered. He saw it. We saw him naked. We called him a fool. We called him a madman. We called him everything, a guy who stays in the tomb. But you, you made all our fun to go off now. You make us afraid. This man has become a normal man now. When you become a child of God, don't be afraid that you'll be persecuted. You will be persecuted because you're a new changed character. Right? They said, you have done a miracle according to what you think, but you, you have taken away our hogs away. Our swines are gone. I mean, we are losing out because of this one man. Enjoy reading the scripture. I'll tell you one thing. When you start reading the scripture, then understand it through the light of the Holy Spirit. You'll enjoy reading scriptures. The whole multitude of the country, they went around, they protested and said to him, depart from. And they were taken with great fear. Now they got into great fear. My, we have a problem now. This man is too good now. He's clothed and he's in his right mind. And he's reading the Bible. Now we are really afraid of this man. And they went up. He went up to the ship and he returned back again. Jesus, when, when he, when Jesus turned back. Verse number 37. We're going to close with that. My, I didn't know it was so late, okay? And the whole multitude. And verse 38. Now the man of whom, out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your own house. Return to your own house and show how great things God has done. But nobody celebrated in this town. Great things that God does, the greatest thing that God can do is give you salvation. Bring you to your right mind and make you a dignified person and make you read the Bible. The first thing is sit at the feet of Jesus and worship him and read the Bible. Return to thy own house and show how great things had done, has God done to me. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. He not only went home on his way, he said, I'm just going to tell everybody. I'm celebrating my new creation. I'm celebrating my new life. 
I'm a dignified man. You saw me a naked man. You're sure? Now I'm clothed. I'm an honored person now. I read my Bible. I pray. I worship. And also, I'm in my right mind. I renew my mind every day. I'm walking in the spirit. They'll be greatly afraid of you. So don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't compromise your salvation. Don't water down the life that he has given you. Go read Isaiah 60 again. I had so many scriptures that I pulled out, but I, we have no time. I'd love to go to those scriptures if I could just stay on verse by verse. I could just go on and on and on. That's how good our God is. Be like a bird. Arise, shine, be strong. That's what the word says. Arise, shine, be strong. Be set on fire. That word shine there means be set on fire. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord risen upon you. And the next verse says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. What are you going to do with darkness if the whole earth is covered with darkness? And gross darkness, the people, people are going to be covered with gross darkness. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be, I mean, just keep reading the whole thing. You'll really see some good things. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your grace and your love and your favor. And Lord, the things that you have put in our hearts, oh God, even the very treasure, you have put this in earthen vessels. Oh, we are thankful to you, Lord. We are thankful to you, Lord. Even as we celebrate the man who you delivered, a father who was naked, running around with no purpose in life. But great fear came upon those demon-possessed people. And I believe, Lord, that that man went around talking about the greatness of God and how good the Lord is. And he would have brought many souls to Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would raise up people in this congregation and those who hear the word through the media, that he would raise them up to shine because there is darkness in the earth and gross darkness in the people. It's only by people who shine and who are set on fire that can do the works of God. Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, your goodness, your mercies. We honor you in this place and we give you the glory. Praise you, Jesus. Let's partake in the covenant meal. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord for your grace thank you for saving us Lord it was the one work that Christ did on the cross that has saved us removed our shame clothed us with the garment of salvation brought us nigh unto whom we can truly worship the creator and Lord giving us a renewed mind Jesus we love you people around us may not celebrate waiting to see our fall but they would never find because we have eternal life in us which can never fail your salvation is not temporary your salvation is an everlasting salvation we thank you Lord for your grace even as you minister unto us this day, even as you strengthened us, that maybe people may not immediately celebrate us, but somewhere down the line, they're going to see that we mean business with God. Thank you, Father. Your salvation is true. Your salvation is eternal. And it can never be altered. Because you have written our names in the Lamb's book of life. And it is impossible for any man to reach out to that book and erase that name. Because it's purchased by the blood of Jesus. And no demon in hell can pay a higher price than the blood of Jesus Christ. No demon in hell can ever pay to repurchase us back is impossible. Father, we thank you for your grace and your love and your favor towards us. And as we partake in this covenant meal, we are so honored, Father. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your love and your favor towards us. As we partake in this covenant meal, let this covenant meal bring protection and healing into our bodies. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, not one of them need to walk out of this place sick in their bodies they can be healed and delivered and your protection even as you protected the children of Israel as Moses obeyed you when and put the lamb's blood on the door lintels but Lord I pray even as you put the blood of Jesus and speak the words of the blood of Jesus through our mouth that we would be so blessed and protected in Jesus name let's partake together Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every time we partake in the covenant meal, we got to celebrate our salvation. It's all because of the blood and the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ that our shame was taken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We celebrate our salvation. We thank you, Jesus. We celebrate our salvation. No matter what people say or think about us, it doesn't matter to us, Lord, but we celebrate. Just as that man who celebrated, who went around sharing the gospel, talking to people about great things that the Lord has done for him. Oh, Jesus, we exalt you. Praise you, praise you, praise you for the salvation that you've given us. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We praise you. You have made us a joy, a name. And honor unto you, Lord, for all the good and the prosperity that you give us, Lord, that you created in us, that people will be afraid. Oh, Jesus, draw them to Christ, whomever we come in touch with. Lord, it's only the Spirit that can draw them. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, for everyone here, Lord, that they would go out with joy and happiness, 
carrying the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with no fear. But the, those who are around them, they would be melted in their hearts and they would repent. And I pray, Lord, that many of souls are going to come to Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's honor him with our tithes and our offerings. And let's believe God who provides us all things richly. And uh, as we bring our tithes, it's not that God needs any money, but he wants to promote us. Give and it shall be given unto you. Every scripture talks about when you give, you always have the windows of heavens open for you. And every, every time you read a scripture about tithing and offerings or bringing a seed into Christ, you always know that there is a promise tied to it. So honor him as you honor him and uh, with your tithes and worship him. And let's sing it again. No, never again are we going to confess the wrong. We're going to speak what the word says and declare every promise that he has given to us. Never again. Never again will I confess I can't.
Hallelujah. Father, we thank and praise you for your grace and your love and your favor towards us. And Father, for all the good that you've done for us, we thank you. And we rejoice, Father, we celebrate our salvation. And Father, even as we see through the scriptures that it is your will that we be saved, and it's, none of, it's not your will that none perish, but Lord, I pray that we are representatives of Christ Jesus, of God. We go as ambassadors of Christ and bringing people and talking good about our kingdom and talking about the greatness of our kingdom and our king. And Lord, draw them to Christ through the love and the patience and the fellowship that we have with you. Father, we thank you for each and every one of these dear ones who have honored you with their tithes and their offerings. They have worshipped you with their tithes. You will, Lord, honor them wherever they go, Father, that they would stay under the open heavens, that they would not lack nothing, O oh God, that they would have enough and more always to share with any good work, O oh God. I thank you, Father, for the glory of God upon their lives. And we see gross darkness upon the people, O oh God, and Lord, we are the solution, O oh God. We carry the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be amongst them, O oh God. I thank you, Father, that we are well protected and guarded, O oh Father, even as you have protected these days ones as they partook in the covenant meal and they believe that the blood protection is for them O oh God and wherever they go and whatever they place their hands upon it shall prosper Lord promote these dear ones and Father that they would have Lord they would come forth and have many breakthroughs in their financial areas O oh Father that they would be blessed beyond measure Lord over and above all the time in Jesus name Amen Amen God bless you God bless you and see you next week